All right, the second part of chapter two uh, covers the microscope, microscopy, and of course you're going to have quite a bit in your Learn Smart Labs activity uh, activities that will also make you much more familiar with the microscope and, and microscopy. All right, so this is a picture of what we call a compound light microscope. Your Learn Smart Labs activities is referring to this as a bright field type of microscope because it uses visible light and creates a, a bright background field of view and you want your microorganisms to generally be darker and provide some contrast to that bright background. So a light microscope, as the name suggests, uses visible light as the source of energy that's going to allow you to view the microorganisms. And a compound refer refers to you've got two sets of magnifying lenses. Uh, you've got one here. This is a rotating nose piece that has what we call the objective lenses in it. And those will either have 4x, 10x, 40x, or 100x magnification. That's your first magnifying lens. Here's your slide over here that has your sample on it. And so your uh, the image is coming up through this first magnifying lens, goes up in here to what we call the body of the microscope, and there are mirrors and prisms that direct that image towards your eyes. And these are your ocular lenses. Some microscopes only have one ocular lens, some have two. And this is another magnifying lens here. So this is your second magnifying lens in the sequence. That's called a compound microscope because you have two magnifying lenses, the objective and then the ocular lens that you're looking through with your eyes. Both of those provide magnification. All right, these other parts of the microscope, I'm going to let you learn about those uh, on your Learn Smart Labs activities. Monocular versus binocular microscopes, that refers to the oculars. If you've got two, it's binocular or, uh, or binocular. Uh, if you only have one, it's a monocular microscope. All right, with a typical compound light microscope in the lab, what's the light path? So you've got your lamp here, um, and your bulb is actually, your light source is generally back in, in here in this part of the, inside the microscope. The light shines up this way. Here's your slide with your sample on it that you're looking at that's sitting on the stage that you have here. And there is a lens right in here called the condenser lens. That's not a magnifying lens. The condenser lens focuses light onto your sample on the slide, and then that passes up into your objective lens. So you've got a magnifying lens there. It's going to increase the size of the image that you're looking at. And that comes up here into the body of the microscope, and you've got mirrors and prisms in here that direct the image toward the eye. And then finally, you've got a magnifying lens here, the ocular lens, that's going to increase the size of your image even more. And this picture from your textbook is showing you, this is supposed to be what, if you were looking at two bacterial cells here under the microscope, this is the image that you're actually seeing. So it's an inverted type of image. So it's reversed and, and flipped. Not that that really matters if what you're looking at are little capsule shaped uh, structures or round shaped structures. It's, you know, it's, that doesn't really matter for uh, many of the types of microorganisms that you would look at in the laboratory. Okay, this is a little bit more information about how a magnified image is generated. And so when you have a microscope over here and you've got your sample sitting there on a slide, this is the stage of the microscope. And like we said, your light coming up from the light source, the lamp, and right in here, you've got a lens called the condenser lens. And all that lens does is it focuses that light onto your sample. The more light that reaches your sample, the more detail you're going to be able to see with your eyes. And then the light passes through your sample. Let's say you've got this little protozoan sitting there on your slide. Light passes through the slide and that little protozoan there. And then it's going to hit your first magnifying lens. So that's going to be up here, your objective lens. You've got four objective lenses on this microscope. You rotate them around to put the correct one in place. And magnifying lenses have this shape. This is a convex type of shape. Remember, this is convex. It bows out, concave, bows inward. 
And convex lenses cause magnification. And why is that? All right, so light travels in rays or waves. And light rays or waves uh, change speeds when they move from air into glass. So they tend to slow down when they hit glass. And when they change speeds, that causes bending. That bending is called, called refraction. Refraction of the light is bending. It's like they're showing you over here in this picture. Here's your specimen sitting there on the slide on your microscope. Light passes through it, hits that magnifying convex lens here in the objective. And the light traveling from this part of that little protozoan in there hits the lens and it bends that way. Light from that part of the protozoan hits the magnifying lens and bends that way. And then inside here in the microscope, you've got air again, correct? There's air filled spaces in there. And when the light moves from the glass lens back into the air, it's going to bend again. It's going to speed up. So you've got refraction again that's taking place. And notice the light rays from this part of the specimen keep traveling that way. The light rays from this part of the specimen bend down that way. And so this is, this is the path of the light rays toward your eyeballs. And that's what's creating this enlarged image because of that refraction that takes place in those magnifying lenses. Now keep in mind you're going to have another round of refraction when those light rays hit the convex shaped magnifying lens in the ocular. All right, what can we see with typical light microscopes in the with with microscopes in general, not just light microscopes in the laboratory? Or what can we see with our own naked eyes? This is a pretty good little figure from your textbook. So for a good healthy pair of typical human eyes, the lower limit of what you can see is about 1 millimeter in length. So a millimeter is 1/1000 one of a meter. It's kind of the width of a piece of paper would be a good example. They've got a louse on here, like a head louse. Uh, reproductive structures on bread mold. If you ever looked at mold on bread and you've seen those little stalks sticking up, um, that's getting down to about the smallest types of things we can see with, uh, with our naked human eyes. Now with a light microscope like you would typically use in a biology or microbiology laboratory, uh, the range of things that we can see is in the micrometer range. So you've got the Greek letter mu, so it's not a lowercase m, it's the Greek letter mu. That stands for micro, that's one one millionth of a meter. So with a typical light microscope in the lab, you're going to look at things from about one micrometer in size to about a hundred micrometers in size. A hundred micrometers is one tenth of a millimeter. If you remember your metric system, from way back when in school. And they're showing you down here at the lower limit, E. coli bacteria are just a few micrometers in length and about one micrometer in, across this way. Um, most bacteria fall between one and 10 micrometers in size. So they're kind of down at the lower limit of what we can see with our microscopes in the laboratory. Here's a red blood cell. Um, here's a colonial alga. So alga is the singular form for algae. And uh, algae can get together and form, form colonies that live together in water. And so that would kind of be at the upper range of what you can see with our light microscopes and lab. All right, now as you move to things that are smaller than that, there are microscopes called electron microscopes. And those use beams or rays of electrons to generate images instead of light. And so you've got to have special equipment and special detectors to create the images, so they're very expensive. You won't find those in a typical undergraduate school laboratory. Uh, but the things you're looking at there are in the nanometer range. So a nanometer, lowercase n, lowercase m, is one one billionth of a meter. So from about one to 200 nanometers. So 200 nanometers, you got mycoplasma bacteria, some of your larger viruses. There's the AIDS virus, HIV, that's about 100 nanometers in diameter. And you get down to the smallest level, down closer to one nanometer, you're getting down to the size of individual proteins or the diameter of DNA and so forth and so on. So you're starting to get down to the big molecule level. Those organic macromolecules are uh, large enough that we can actually see them with electron microscopes. 
If you go smaller than that, beyond the one nanometer size limit, you're getting down to things like individual amino acids or sugars um, or even individual atoms. And you've got to have special microscopes to see those types of things. You're not going to see those in a typical... Um, most laboratories don't have microscopes that are that powerful. They're extremely expensive. All right, a few more principles of light microscopy. And again, you're going to be covering this in your Learn Smart Labs activities as well. Remember, you've got in a compound microscope, you've got two lenses. The objective, that's the one that's closest to your specimen. Um, and then your ocular is that second one. That's the one you're looking into with your, with your eyes. All right, another concept I want you guys to know is total magnification. So if you've got a 4x objective lens in place that you're looking at a specimen with, the ocular lenses in a typical light microscope have a tenfold or 10x magnification level. So you put those two together and that's going to give your total magnification. So if you had a 4x objective lens in place, that's going to magnify your uh, image four times, the image of your specimen. When that four times magnified image hits the ocular, it's going to get magnified ten more times. So what you're actually seeing is the total magnification of the image, which is going to be 40x. 40x. And that's how it's typically written. If you're going to write out what magnification did I use, I looked at it with at 40x total magnification. If you had the 100x objective, that's sometimes called your oil immersion lens, that'll be covered in your virtual lab activity in more detail. Um, 100x magnified image hits the oculars, so you multiply that by 10, and that gives you a total magnification of 1,000x. So 1,000x is typically the largest, highest magnification you can get with a typical laboratory light microscope. Okay, so that's magnification. That's one of the key principles of microscopy that you um, need to know about. Another is resolution. What is the resolving power of a microscope? And uh, all right, so you guys have heard of resolution, like with uh, photography, with your digital camera or with your phone camera. Higher resolution means higher clarity. You can actually distinguish between two different things, maybe off in the distance. Or if you're looking up close, you're taking a picture of something up, up really super, super, super close. You're being able, able to resolve detail, individual features or structures that are really close to each other. So the resolution power of a microscope is how close can two things be to each other and you're still going to be able to see them as two separate distinct things. They're not going to blend together. That's resolution. Um, for example, our human eyes, if two objects are closer than 0.2 millimeters apart, remember you're getting down to around one millimeter. That's about as, as small as we can see with the human eye. If two things are um, more than 0.2 millimeters apart, we can still tell with our eyes that those are two different objects. Uh, but if they get closer than that with our eyes, our eyes, we can't distinguish those two things as being separate. They're going to blend together. So, so th same thing with a microscope. A microscope with high resolution is going to give you a lot more clarity and a lot more detail. It's going to distinguish between parts of cells or whatever that are very close together. Low resolution, you're not going to have as much clarity. More things are going to blend together. The image will look hazier or fuzzier. And here's a good picture from your textbook, which is showing you low resolution. You got some fuzzy looking microorganisms there. High resolution, you can see a lot more clarity in detail. And they're using this as an example as well. We've got a purple cell here surrounded by some, some yellow cells. And they're showing you with uh, under high resolution, you might be able to see that those little tiny yellow cells there around the bigger purple one uh, that there's a whole bunch of them, that they're very distinct. With a low mic resolution microscope, though, you might just see lots of these little ones blending together as larger yellow blobs because your microscope has such low resolution, you can't tell that those are, are distinct individual objects. All right, so on your Learn Smart uh, 
lab activity you're going to learn about the 100x objective on a typical light microscope is also called the oil immersion lens. And so you use a special type of oil which limits some of the light scattering that takes place um, as you move with the light rays, as the light rays move from the slide into that little space between the slide and the objective lens, the immersion oil help, helps you lose less of the light due to refraction. And that's what they're showing you over here. Let's say here's a slide you've got on the stage of a microscope. Light's coming up this way from your lamp. Remember, you've got a condenser lens there below here that's not magnifying. It's just focusing the light rays onto your sample because the more light that reaches your sample, the more detail you're going to be able to see. The light passes through the slide. And remember, the slide is glass, so it's going to cause the light to refract or bend. And if you just have air here, notice that some of the light rays go ahead and move up here to the objective lens, but some of them miss the objective lens altogether because of the bending that took place. If you have the oil in there, the oil causes a lot less refraction of the light, a lot less bending. So more of your light actually makes it to the objective lens. You lose less of it off over here to the side of the objective lens. And the more light rays that reach the lens, will provide more resolution. You're going to be able to see more detail on the from your specimen as it gets magnified. So this immersion oil is something that's special. It's only used with the 100x objective lens. Keep that in mind. You never use oil with any other objective lens on a microscope. Um, pay close attention on your Learn Smart Labs activity to proper use and cleaning of the microscope when you use oil immersion lens. But uh, when you use the oil, it greatly Im improves the clarity and resolution of the image that you're seeing. All right, so that was kind of a quick overview of some highlights on microscopy. You're, again, you're going to have a lot more of that information on your Learn Smart Labs activities and use your uh, study guide to help kind of guide you through what you need to you need to know from those Learn Smart Lab activities on microscopy. The last little video lecture clip, we're going to talk a little bit about preparing specimens for microscopy. What do you actually have to do before you look at them under the microscope in the laboratory? And we'll talk a little bit about staining of microorganisms on, on slides before you view them with a microscope. And then that's going to wrap up chapter two. Like I say, we're just kind of hitting some of the highlights from that, from that chapter here as part of unit one.